Good morning, Marcus Conti reporting on the full State of the Union. Tell a story first. When I was a kid, right, my grandmother, she owned a house, right, she lived, um, she lived like a block away from the elementary school, PS 39, right? And um, I, every day I would go home, like when all the kids would, the other kids would sit in the lunchroom and have their lunch, I would run down the block, literally run, run down the block to grandma's house to get lunch, right? Uh, she make, you know, she make at the time I ate meat, I, I, you know, tuna fish sandwich or, you know, grilled cheese, <laughs> all good stuff, right? All good kid stuff, right? French fries, Italian food, you know? And, um, but what, what we used to do too is like my grandmother and I would talk about soap operas. <laughs> Remember like all my children and, um, the fucking, uh, as the world turns, <laughs> those those uh, old um, soap operas were 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 iconic, right? And 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 they would play during you know like my lunch hour, right? And so I would watch, you know, I would watch them because my grandmother was watching them, right? So I knew all the storylines, right? I knew everything, right? It was like. Um, you know, and sometimes, like, sometimes she would be, she'd have to go somewhere, right? Like, like, sometimes, because there was other, other parts of the story that I was in school and I couldn't watch, like, three o'clock. So she would have to tell me what happened, and, you know, and then, and then, like, if she was missing, had to go somewhere, I would have to tell her what was happening, right? It was like, you know, I would sit down and tell my grandma, oh, you got to see, this one is screwing that one, and... And that one said this and the other thing, right? A fucking soap opera, right? What's that have to do with anything, really? That's, that, that's what this is, right? I'm a soap opera. You guys are trying to sit, you watch. <laughs> we watch each other to see if we're going to self destruct, explode. Ah. Uh, wow, to have lunch with my grandmother again. The ideal setup by the party was something huge, terrible and glittering, a world of steel and concrete, of monstrous machines and terrifying weapons, a nation of warriors and fanatics marching forward in perfect unity, all thinking the same thoughts and shouting the same slogans, perpetually working, fighting, triumphing, persecuting 300 million people all with the same face it was a bright day in April and the clocks were striking 13 George Orwell 1984 what's most startling about that prediction right there is that he even had the number right 300 million people how many people do we have in the US what's the current population 300 million how did he know that in 1980, in 1948 when he wrote it, the 1930s when he wrote it? Startling, startling stuff, right? But that is, that's what we saw last night in the State of the Union, right? I want to talk about it. I, that I took up three and a half minutes of your time with my storytelling. Right? But it was interesting, right? There was a couple of good things. I'm going to give Trump some credit, and for the most part, I'm going to tear him down. Um, so, I'll just rattle off some of the things that I liked. He talked about uh, paid family leave. I'll just get these out of the way. That's a good thing. I, I like that. You know, when people work and uh, as part of a compensation package, they should get, you know, women that have a baby, paid family leave. He bashed the late term abortion uh, moments before a baby is born, they could be aborted. He, he, he called it, you know, I, I think he stopped short of calling it murder. But uh, I, I agree with that. I think it's, you know, I think women should have the right to choose to a certain point. But at some point, where does the, where does the child have a, a right to be? So, and New York, I mean, I'm in New York right now. They just passed the most barbaric um, uh, ideas, uh, the, the most barbaric legislation yet. So I agree with him there. He, he went really deep into the wall. 
And, um, and he made a great case for it. He really did. Right? So he said that um, he was talking about, about uh, the, you know, the children and the, and the, 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 the uh, you know, the, the trafficking, the drugs, the drugs smuggling into the country, right? He talked about all that stuff. Right? And he makes a great case for it. This is my notes. Can't find the page where I said it. Anyway, he made a great case for uh, for the wall as being something valid. And I had a revelation. I was like, you know what? I'm for the wall. Right? Five billion dollars is not a big deal. It's not a big deal at all because because even if it doesn't work, let's say let's just say that. Right? Let's fuck it. Right, let's say he's right. Let's say the Donald knows something about that it's going to stop immigration, illegal immigration. Uh, it's going to stop them, the rapings and the killings from MS-13, which is very little evidence to, to really suggest that's what's going on. That's more of a scapegoat, the whole, you know, the whole blame the immigrants for everything. But, but let's just say it isn't, right? Even if he builds the wall, he spends $5 billion on a wall, U.S. spent, I don't know, how many, $13 trillion on, on war in the, in, in, the, in the Middle East? I got that number, too. Fucking, how much? $7 trillion on the wars in, in, in uh, the Middle East to stomp out ISIS. $7 trillion. You can't spend a, a fraction of 1% of that to build a wall and satisfy this president? Because what you'll see is that it will, I mean, again, we live in the age of boats and planes and tunnels and, 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 and go-arounds and work-arounds and work-overs and work-unders, right? If, that, if, if it has any effect, I'd be very surprised. But here's the good thing, right? Here, let's just say this. this is, here's the workaround for, for the wall, right? Even if, even if the wall fails, right? Even if the wall fails, right? This is what we do. We break it down, right? Maybe like, you know, 10 years after Trump. We, we, we break it down, like, yeah, it's fucking, like, steel, right? And we sell it. <laughs> sell it on eBay, right? 20 bucks an ounce or a pound or, you know, a plank of fucking Trump steel. I would pay for that. I'd spend, I'd spend 10 bucks to get a piece of the wall, the failed wall. Or maybe it isn't a failed wall, and then, it, then he was right. But no one will ever know because it'll, it'll be 10 years after he's dead before they'll figure it out. So give him the wall. Give him the fucking wall, man. Come on, man. It's all bullshit, right? So the wall was good, man. Right? I like this quote. He said, uh, tolerance for illegal immigration is not compassionate. It is actually very cruel. Ooh. So these are all social issues. Let's get them out of the way because they don't really matter. They don't really mean anything. In the greater scheme, it doesn't have any effect on the economy whatsoever. I put the I put Trump's transcript the uh, the video down below if you want to watch. I also put the, a clip that I'm going to talk about Maduro, uh, Venezuelan president. I put that clip down below. Watch both of those; those are really good. And I also put uh, a PDF for the book 1984 if you want to watch that. If you want to read the book, PDF free. Download it. Have it. I, uh, there was no mention whatsoever in, in the in the in the State of the Union. No mention whatsoever uh, about the corrupt media. Right. Well, let me talk about this. Firstly, economic miracle is taking place. This is Trump. He says that there's an economic miracle taking place, and that the only thing that can stop it is ridiculous partisan investigations. Ah, so there he is. He's walking it back. He's walking back the investigations. So he's not going to lock her up. There's no Comey going to jail, no investigations. He totally, he's fucking you over, right? All the, all the QAnon people, all the, how many hours of hours and hours of the Clinton Foundation investigations? They're closing in. All that's nonsense. Because the President of the United States is saying that these are ridiculous partisan investigations. If there's going to be peace and legislation, there cannot be, there cannot be war and investigations. 
It just doesn't work that way. That's Trump saying it. So there you go, right? He's he's just like all the rest, right? He's he's now in in lockstep, right, with the oligarchy, right? You can't investigate them because they'll investigate him, right? See how that worked out? See how the the RussiaGate thing worked out? The CIA put it up. They propped it up. Hillary Clinton, RussiaGate, and that was to keep Trump sh quiet, to, to to drive him into complacency, and it worked. Why? Because he said ridiculous partisan investigations are ridiculous. So you won't see any more of that. So you could stop all that. Okay. So now you guys could stop all that with the with the, the sealed indictments and the military tribunals and 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 they're all going to get locked up and their heads are going to get chopped off and the guillotine. Look, I know it's it's disgusting and miserable that these people are above the law. But that is just that just is the reality of the of the situation. And there's not a damn thing we could do about it under the current circumstances so long as there is money in politics so long as the politicians are bought and sold by the corporations there's nothing you can do about it right you can't there's nothing you can do about it so he also talked about nafta still relitigating nafta i'm going to talk about venezuela because he had he really i want to show you what the tie-in to venezuela is how they're going to use it they're using they're using the ideology of socialism to smear it, right? Smear Venezuela, and why? Because of the insurgence that's coming, which is the Sanders movement, which represents 40% of the country that want, not, not the old-fashioned thing called socialism, whatever, nobody even knows what it means anymore, but the, the idea of, uh, uh, you know, public sharing of wealth, right? That's social programs like, you know, schools and job programs and, and um, health care and those sorts of things. Right? And rather than oligarchy, which is big oil, big pharma, you know, industri military industrial complex, prison industrial complex. And we see the devastating, the tragedies of all those things. Right? So there was no mention whatsoever. He mentioned nothing about about um, the yellow vests, not a, not a word, right? He's talking about Venezuela. Fucking Venezuela is 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 uh, trying to trying to you know do the will of the people, but in in France you have seventy percent of the people wanting to oust the oligarchy, oust the monopoly, get rid of them, get them out of their country. Trump is silent on that, right? Where in Venezuela you have maybe. A fraction of one percent speaking out, right? Oh, millions of people marching. What? There is no millions of people. There's a couple of couple of thousand people out in the square because they're paid, or they're, you know, or they're they're part of the they're part of some kind of you know elitist group, and they show up in the street, and that's what you're going to point to. That's the majority of the people. The people in, in in Venezuela spoke. So let me let me read that into the record too. That, I, I, I liked what he, I liked what he said. I mean, I don't like what he said, but how he said it is f fascinating. Right? This is what he said about uh, Maduro. Two weeks ago, the United States officially recognized the legitimate government of Venezuela, and it is and its new interim president Juan Guaido. We stand with the Venezuelan people in their noble quest for freedom. Really? How do you stand with the people if if the if eighty percent of the people are for the president vocally, he was elected, and there's no evidence whatsoever that anybody is against him. That any majority is against him. So that's this is where we get into Orwellian double double talk. It doesn't this is totally irrelevant, totally total total propaganda with a motive, and I'll tell you what the motive is. I figured it out. We condemn the brutality of the Maduro regime, whose socialist policies have turned the nation from the wealthiest in South America into a state of abject poverty and despair. So again, it's smear them with a term from the old Soviet days, socialism, right? Where 
where you get, it's all free stuff. You're going to give everything away, right? To take the mind away from the oligarchy, right? So here's, here's, here's the, the follow-up the, the follow to it. Here in America, we are alarmed by, alarmed by new calls to adapt socialism in our country. And then they, they, on TV, they flash to Bernie Sanders. <laughs> America was founded on liberty and independence, not government coercion, domination, and control. But that's precisely what we have. Coercion, domination, and control. At every aspect of our, of our lives, that's what we have. 99% of the country must obey the 1% or perish, literally. So that's a lie, too. We are born free, and we will stay free. Tonight, we renew our resolve that America will never be a socialist country. And then the chants, USA, USA, USA. Now you hear the chants. That's four legs good, two legs bad. Four legs good, two legs bad, right? It's the chants from the ignorant masses that, that can't, because freedom is good, but people in a, in a country of, of like ancient Greece, like the Greeks were, I mean, to, to a large degree, were a socialist nation, probably the first where all men of Greece had equal say in the matter. There was no real set government, right? The, the Greek, the, you know, Plato and Socrates, right? But, the, but nonetheless, fearmonger, he talked, he, he, he breezed over NAFTA that, uh, you know, they're still litigating NAFTA, right? The, the crumbling infrastructure, right? No talk of that. No jobs plan. None of that. No, no. Remember when he talked about Trump in the, in the, in the um, campaign about term limits? Not a word, right? Mention of corrupt media? Not a word. Nothing. Nothing, not a single word about the corrupt media. Term limits, uh, health care for all, no mention whatsoever about, about improving health care in the country. No talk whatsoever about the debt problem, 13 trillion in, in mortgages, people's debt, right? The corruption in the banking industry, no talk about it whatsoever, right? No talk about poverty, right? He, he, he made it, this is another startling one, right? That he made, he, that $700 billion, that, that's burning a hole in their fucking pocket, right? And that's what Venezuela is all about. So if they can, they're going to they're gonna invade and, 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 and make a stance in Venezuela for sure. Right? But this is another one he said. Under my administration, we will never apologize for advancing America's interest, interests. A bold new democracy. Ah, like the New Deal. You remember the New Deal? Now it's a bold new democracy. Ah, where the Americans are in charge of everything. The empire. Right. He talked about Israel. Uh, he, made a, he made a comment about a, a, a wonderful visual of the, the iconic soldiers in World War II saving the Jew from, the, from extermination. It's the Americans, honey. Look, the Americans are here to save us. Right? As if to justify the, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the tyranny that we're seeing all around us. Seeing the tyranny in our country. So that's the state of our, that's the state of our false state of our union. There's truths in there sprinkled in, but the, the, big, the big part of it is mostly lies, right? That if we want to see a country of the people, by the people, and for the people, we have to go to the, to the, to the belly of the beast, the eye of the storm, the head of the snake, which is corporate oligarchy, not tax breaks for the rich. He talked about the, um, the death tax, right? The one-tenth of one percent billionaires that want this tax. There's a bill on the floor in Senate to get it done. And if 99.9% .9 of the people, it has no effect on whatsoever. It actually makes their lives worse. It's as if like you can, they, they want to take their money and stick it in the coffin with them and take it with them. Give it to their, 
you know, uh, uh, make make legacies and 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 you know, super families. Right? That's what they talk. That's what that's what Trump's all about. Corporate tax rate lose the corporate tax rate. Right? Deregulate. Look at what deregulation get, gets us. Deregulation gets us more corruption on Wall Street, more corruption in politics because that corrupt money flows into politics and makes the 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 democrat republican paradigm even more severe and blocks people from the truth All right so i mean it was is it inspiring to watch trump get up there and 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 you know talk and and you know and and it's i mean it's wonderful you know you saw the the white the, the girls dressed in white a liberal Li- li- liberation, liberating the women. That was very important to them, right? See, we're women and fuck you. <laughs> right? We're going to fucking impeach you, motherfucker. Right? That's important to, 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 uh, you know, I, I, I come into the revelation too that Asal- Alessandro Ocasio Cortez was a good plant for the, for the, the establishment, the democratic establishment, because She's she's so out of her league, she's so out leagued and so stuck on on the Me Too, you know, uh, uh, identity politics nonsense that she's a good scapegoat because whenever 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 we say tax tax the wealthy and and bring equilibrium back to the economy for for working people and regular people they say socialism and then they point at the idiot. With the, with the horse teeth. <laughs> it's a good one. I mean, it works. The Democrats played that well. So they got a, you know, a blundering idiot, you know, clouding up the message, which is coming in 2020, guaranteed, right? That's, that's the fear. See, again, the Democrats would, and you're seeing it already in play. I know that there's a lot of, I'll wrap this up. I know I'm going a little long, but the, the uh, progressive, uh, wing of the Democratic Party right now is 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 still perplexed. How dare the media speak down about Bernie Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard and other progressive candidates? How dare them do that? It's it's like as it's, it's if it's as if they're not even paying attention anymore. Like we already know that the media is is thoroughly corrupt. We already know that the Democratic Party is thoroughly corrupt. So why is it surprising when they when they downplay your 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 candidates and refuse to let them speak why do you continue to think that something is going to change because they told you it was going to change because they lied to you and said, oh it's going to change it never it doesn't change and it won't change so that's not particularly surprising when you see democrats getting shit on however it doesn't it doesn't change the, the swell of the people. Remember, in 2016, if the Democrats would have supported the favorite candidate of the Democratic Party, which was Bernie Sanders, if they would have done that, Sanders would have clearly won because Clinton allegedly lost by, you know, even by, by the number of people that defected and said that they would never vote for Clinton, the young people, the millennials, that told them Bernie a bus that they would never ever vote for Clinton the Democrats couldn't cheat their way through it right but if you have a candidate like Sanders he Sanders would have won is what I'm trying to say right if 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 the defected Sanders people would have voted for Clinton the numbers would have pushed Hillary Clinton over the top but it didn't happen because because Clinton wasn't wasn't going to happen, right, to the Democrats, right? I I had a great thought and I forgot what it was, but either way, Sanders. Yeah. Oh, what I was trying to say is that the fear. That's what I was trying to say. So the fear of the Democratic Party, the Democrats would rather lose to Trump than win with Sanders. Why? Because Sanders represents deflation of the oligarchy, actually going to the eye of the storm, changing the, changing the financial ways in which we do business, deflating 
the, the power structure, taking the money out of politics, term limits, all those things. Sanders is not necessarily for term limits, but, but to, to take the money out of politics. It's a big play, right? And so the Democrats can't have that. Their donors won't have it. They won't make any money. Nobody will give, they'll give all the money to the, to the Republican side and win with Trump rather than, ra- rather than uh, win with Sanders. They don't want to win with Sanders. See, it's not about Democrat, Republican. It's about, it's about oligarchy versus the people, always, right? So that little play on words at the end of the Venezuela stunt about, about socialism, because that's the smear, right? If you say socialism, it gets the, it gets the people, the, the, the Trumpsters, oh, fuck it, I hate fucking socialism. Build a fucking wall. <laughs> right? See, it works. It's a, well, it's a well-oiled... It's a well-oiled propaganda machine, All right? So, that's some of my thoughts on um, that's some of my thoughts on the uh, false state of the union last night. And um, if you could kindly become a patron, I'm not going anywhere. By the way, <laughs> just for the record, I'm not going anywhere. Do I look like I'm getting tired? Do I look like I'm getting worn down? Somebody said that shit. I can't. You look like. What, are you kidding me? I'm. The, I'm not, I haven't even gotten started yet. This is only fucking, we're just getting going here. What are you talking about, man? Fucking, I'm, I do, this is, I'm doing push-ups right now. <laughs> Kindly become a Patreon, please. Become a Patreon. A dollar a month. You're a Patreon. You're part of the program. Dollar, two dollars, right? And, 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 it, and it keeps it going, right? So I can advance. To, I have ideas, you know? I fucking, I can't get, there's certain softwares and computerware that I can't have, I can't get. I can't access because of money, t-shirts, all that stuff. It has to be a, you know, a, a, uh, a well-oiled machine. So kindly become, a, think about becoming, don't think about it. Go ahead and do it. Become a Patreon. Marcus Conti reporting.